welcome back. You can see my makeup looks a little bit different today, right? Just a little. You can also see I have my friend and makeup artist Nikki LaRose here. The reason I look like this is because we're gonna show you an Ariana Grande wedding makeup inspired tutorial. Yes, it's gonna be so much fun. So one really quick note, we have no idea what products were actually used on Ariana Grande that day. I mean, there was something said about like Armani products being used, mm -hmm. but even at that, no one ever said yeah. the exact product. There was nothing specific. Yeah. Like I couldn't find any of the shades, like even just like the lipstick, which is usually like easier to find, I feel like. Yeah. I couldn't find anything. Yeah. So this is purely like what we think that we saw based on her her wedding day pictures. There's not even that many to to choose from. Like I scoured the internet looking for more photo options. And nothing. This is what we came up with. And, and when she says we, I mean Nikki did all the work here. Like she really did. She, I mean you hung she, out with me. If anything, it's just a really pretty look. That's okay. enjoyable in itself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so let's do it. All right, so I obviously don't have any makeup on. We did put my brows on because yes. that can take a little while and we don't want this video to be like five hours long. I also have some glisten happening on my body. We bronzed me up a little bit. I've also been practicing my, my Ariana. Are you ready for it? Let's hear ready. it. Uh, I'm, I'm getting married. <laughs> I'm getting married. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna do a makeup look inspired by Ariana's wedding look. Yes. Right? That classic, super simple wedding look that she had that was so beautiful. Ash K. Home did it. She's a phenomenal. Everyone knows who yeah. she is. Celebrity makeup artist. She's she also works amazing. on the Kardashians and several other celebrities. Yes. But the, to me the look was very matte, very classic, and very clean. Like I look at it, and it's all very clean, precise lines. Like even down to her contour, like her sculpted cheeks. If you look at her contour from those photos, like the photos that are out there, it's very clean, it's very cut and very precise. So I, that's what I think of when I see that makeup look. Yep. But it's also like classic because it has like a very soft, like a softer for Ariana right. wing liner. It's not like her typical, like brought out to here wing liner. It's a much shorter wing. It's more classic, more like yeah. More well, bridal. The shape that Ash K. Holm created was just so like classic and just, it really had like an Audrey Hepburn vibe to mm -hmm. me when that I see it. Sense. So we're gonna be doing a look based off of and inspired by. And you're also gonna give some tips on wedding makeup and share yeah. some of the products that you would recommend, right? Totally. Since this is a bridal look, we're going to do products that I would recommend for a bridal look. And one of those products would be the P. Louise Rumor O2 is a color. It's basically like, it creates a blank canvas. It's just a, an eyeshadow primer. And they make- P. Louise? Yeah. I've it's never kind heard of like this brand. Yeah, they're kind of a- P. Louise. I guess more of like an indie brand. Mm -hmm. But this primer is great. It's super blendable. It will definitely make your eye makeup last all day. And it also is gonna give us a really nice blank canvas. So that way the shadows we put on top, you know, I talk about this all the time, like they're gonna pop and they're gonna be like true to their color. Starting out with a little bit of that base, I'm going to pat this onto her eyelid. Less is more with this product too. Like you don't need a lot of this stuff. You need like a really small amount. It's like very spreadable. So we're gonna do that. And this base is just gonna help to get us there really quick. I'm not like blending it all over the place. I'm just gonna press it in so it's nice and secure on Susan's eyelid. And then to make it even more secure, I'm gonna set it. I'm gonna use one of my favorite powders. This one's from One Size Beauty. It's a translucent powder. This powder is like so good. So I'm gonna press this onto her eyelid just to make sure that base that we put on first doesn't crease. And then also any shadows that we put on top are not gonna crease as well. This is so important if you're doing a bridal look specifically. Anything you put on your skin that's a liquid including an eyeshadow base, you would think that you wouldn't have to set an eyeshadow base because it's a base, right? But it just gives you like that really long lasting effect. And it just ensures that your powder eyeshadows that you put on top are not gonna crease, like no way. So now we're gonna dip into our first eyeshadow palette. This one's from Hindosh. We love this palette. This one's the new Monochromance palette. And I'm gonna start out with these top two shades, um, Alter and Ego, probably focusing more on Ego, which is like a cool tone more like a taupe. And to me, and I think everyone translates this look that she has for her wedding day different. Everyone has a different set of eyes, mm. but to me, I think it looks more cool toned, but there's definitely like a mix of like some warmth in there too. It's not like completely cool toned, but I see majority of it like being more on the cool side. So yeah. this color is gonna be perfect for that. So I'm gonna dip in with a blending brush. This one's from Zueva. We're not gonna go crazy with this color. We're gonna keep this like pretty controlled. And this is gonna be our starting color, like our transitional color. You know, it's key that like any color that you're using for your eye makeup look, 
that first color that you lay down, that transitional shade, it mm -hmm. should be a little more neutral. Mm. Because it just kind of lays like, it, it, it creates a map for the rest of your eye makeup. Now to give Susan's eyes like a little Ariana inspired lift, I'm going a slightly above her crease oh, with this color. I like it, yeah. I like it. Lift those eyes. Yep. And we're also, we're gonna keep the shadow from going halfway across. So it's gonna stop about halfway, a little over halfway across her lid. And then just lightly blend it out and up towards her temple. And that's gonna just give like a really soft illusion of like a, like a little <laughs> sculpt up. And I'm gonna just kind of bring it down and create like a sideways V. Same brush, I'm gonna dip into Match Made, but keeping it more like the made side. It's got a lot more warmth to it actually, okay. but oh, to yeah. me it's actually just a nice neutral. So that's great. It's like a nice transition into more of a neutral shade. And now we're just gonna kind of layer it on top of that first shade, but keeping it even more tight. You'll see what I mean in a second. I'm gonna keep it really just in this outer V of her eye. And then just a slight like C shape, I'm gonna just blend around her, like I guess into like the tightest part of her crease, like right here. And then wing it out, out and up. Okay, so now I'm gonna switch my brush to a MAC 217. I'm gonna dip into Heartthrob. I'm gonna overlay this right on top of what we just did. And the reason why I switched to a clean brush for this color is because this color is completely different from the last two shades that we used. And if I use that same brush, it would just look really muddy. So now I'm gonna dip back into that P. Louise primer that we first used and a small flat brush that's like pretty stiff and will give me a lot of control. So I'm gonna use this and just a really small amount of that eyeshadow base. And now we're gonna cut her crease. Ooh, so you cannot, oh, I've always wanted to yes, see this done on my eyes. But you cannot laugh. Okay. You can barely breathe. Okay, so stay completely still. Okay, no close jokes. My eyes. Close my eyes. Okay. You're actually gonna look straight ahead. Mm. <sighs> I know. This I feels stressful. It is stressful. <laughs> and so many people want this look and then they don't realize like you cannot move. So now we're gonna go back to the Hindosh palette and we're gonna dip into Alter. It's like that lightest shade just to set it. Okay, and then Curveball. We're gonna grab a palette that we're gonna use later on for the rest of her face. I'm gonna dip into this highlighting shade from Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Filmstar Bronze and Glow palette. And just flipping to the clean side of my brush, I'm gonna use this to pack on top of that other shade. Mm. It is a highlighter color, but it's a very like, soft highlighter. It's not like a super glittery, shimmery highlight. Okay, so I finished this eye, as you can see, and the bulk of the eyeshadow look is done, which is, whew. no, actually the hardest part's coming up, which is gonna be the eyeliner. But before I do the eyeliner, I'm gonna switch to a small pencil brush and grabbing the Makeup by Mario Master Mattes palette, we're gonna dip into this really bright, matte, neutral shade and so i'm hearing a lot of matte a lot of neutral yeah that's, that's like the shimmer. theme for sure with this look so i'm gonna actually highlight her brow bone mm. but just a little bit because if it's too far down like if the brow bone highlight is ends up being too far down it's actually gonna make your eye space like your eyelid space appear like shorter and we don't want that we want it to be like way up Same brush and same shade. I'm just gonna go over her tear duct just a little, just to brighten that area. And also just kind of to diffuse that, the rest of like the cut that we did with that eyeshadow base. In the tear duct, I don't want it to look, you know, too sharp. It's fine for it to look sharp like above where the crease is. I just, I don't prefer it to look too sharp down here. So I'm just gonna kind of blend it in a little bit more and at the same time, brighten this inner part of her eye. Okay, moving on to eyeliner. We're gonna do um, kind of a mix of gel mm -hmm. eyeliner and liquid. Oh, so we're really going for it, Yes, huh? and the reason why I'm gonna do two sounds like excessive, but it's really not. I want the liner to be very, very tapered, but also connected, which is like what I see in Ariana Grande's wedding makeup. So I'm gonna use a liquid liner just to just to elongate your lash line and also just to 
run it along your lash line. That way it connects really thin and tapered into our gel that we're gonna do for the end, for the outer corner, for that wing. So for that, I'll be using the Hindosh Hero Line. And that's just gonna be our start. It's like a little baby. It's just a start. And now we're gonna go into a gel liner to create that wing shape. And this is the Inglot 77 gel liner. This is like a staple. All right, using a very, this is actually an eyebrow brush, believe it or not. It's got like this spoolie on the other end. But the reason why I'm using this is because it is really, really, really thin, which is what I want. Cause like we said, like Ariana didn't have like a really thick liner. It was very like tamed and it wasn't super long. I like to start with like my tail, like the actual wing, and then I connect it to the other liner that we just placed previously. So if you think about it in steps like that, it's so much less daunting than trying to like go in and like create like from beginning to end this perfect wing liner because it's not gonna, it's no, not achievable it. unless yeah. you're like God's gift to wing liner. <laughs> It's not really God's achievable. Gift of wing liner. Yeah, so do it in steps and it's so much less daunting. So now you're gonna actually close because I got the shape down. And then I'd recommend starting thinner than you actually want your liner to be and building it. Yeah, so. It inevitably always gets bigger. And I'm gonna push the rest of this into her lashes so I don't see any gaps of where there's like skin. We'll eventually go in and tight line the inside of your top lash line to really blend the two so there's no gaps, but that's like our start. Okay, so that is one wing liner done. Okay, now we can breathe. Our liner is on both eyes. So we can finally move on and we're gonna move on to mascara. We're gonna do one coat of mascara before we do some lashes. We're definitely gonna do lashes. We're gonna use the Gucci mascara. You like this mascara, right? Yeah, I do. Yeah, this is a really nice mascara. I would suggest, oh, this kind of goes without saying, Waterproof. in my opinion. Yeah, if you're if you're actually getting married and you're using this video to help you with your wedding day makeup look, make sure you do a waterproof mascara. So I'm just doing one coat. And what that's gonna do is create a nice shelf for when I put her uh, strip lashes on. Yeah. I am gonna cut your strips in half because it just wouldn't be me if I did a full on strip on you. Um, we, we still need to like, like the look. Yeah. And so this is just gonna help to give us a nice little shelf and like more stability because like coating your, coating your lashes before you put strips on or even individuals, make sure you do one coat of mascara. It doesn't have to be a heavy coat. Don't clump them. Do like a nice thin, even coat because it gives your lashes stability, mm -hmm. like some grip. And then we'll go in one more time once the lashes are applied and we'll do that last coat to blend the two together, which is also very important. I'm gonna grab some Ardell Demi Wispies and we are gonna cut them, but I'm not going to, I'm probably not gonna use the longest end. So I'll show you right now how I'm gonna cut them. First, I'm gonna pull them out and measure them to Susan's eyes and just to see like how much we really do need to take off. And just to see, Look straight ahead. <laughs> it feels funky because they're basically just laying on top of your lashes, but this is just a great way to like test it out before you actually glue them onto your lashes. So I'm actually just gonna cut the inner corner and taking the Duo Lash Adhesive. This is a great strong hold lash adhesive. Like I'm gonna take the longer end of the lashes that I just cut, get a good layer on top of the, the band. I'm gonna let it dry down just a bit more before I actually go and apply it. So that way when I, when I apply it, it's gonna stick right away. And it's not gonna fall down, get glue everywhere. This should be nice and tacky. So open, but look down. Another important thing too is just because you're supposed to apply your strip lashes in particular, like, you know, like where like your actual lash line is, it's always better to bring them further in, like closer in mm -hmm. than to the very end of your actual lash line because it could actually create a shadow and give you like the illusion that your eyes like downward. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna prep your skin with the Naturium BHA Liquid Exfoliant. If you know me and you like follow me, like I always have this in my kit. She uses so much of this on her clients mm -hmm. that she goes through a ton of it. It really is the best way to prep someone's yep. skin because the exfoliants in it really help to just smooth the skin out. Mm -hmm. And you see that immediate effect as well. But what makes this really interesting for makeup, in my opinion, is that 
it's so hydrating for the skin yes. as well. So even though it's exfoliating, it's also hydrating. I'm gonna follow it up with the Naturium Multi-Peptide Moisturizer. This is also a staple that doesn't leave my makeup kit like professionally. <laughs> I find that it's good for everyone. Mm -hmm. Everyone likes yeah. it, everyone's skin agrees with it. I even use this on oily skin clients because they need moisturizer and they need hydration. Yep. What do they think they do or not? <laughs> right, right, right. I'm um, sure I can hear the arguments with you right now. Yes, exactly. It's gonna be the best foundation before we put the foundation on. We're talking like actual bridal skin prep. This is something I would never skip. I'm gonna do something that we don't typically do ever, which is a primer. Yeah. I'm gonna use the NARS a Soft Matte Primer. And the reason why I'm using this is because I wanna keep with the theme, even though it's not something that I gravitate towards with Susan's makeup in particular. If we're talking like wedding day makeup, throw in a primer. If there's one day you're gonna use it, it's gonna be your wedding day. I wanna give her skin more of a matte look, just like Ariana Grande's look. I felt like it was just very airbrushed and very matte. So I'm just gonna focus this in Susan's T-zone. And yes, I'm applying it with my fingertips. Primers, to me, they go on best with fingertips, like nice clean fingertips. You can just really get in there and you can really work them on top of the skin. Because the last thing you want a primer to do, especially, is just sit on top of your skin. So we're gonna also switch up your foundation. Mm -hmm. I know normally we always use the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk. It's the new formulated Makeup Forever HD Skin. This is like, it does not move from your skin. So very, very long wearing, very full coverage. So full coverage, but I also feel like it's still very natural looking though. Yes, depending on like how you blend it. She's like, it can, it depends. Who's depends. putting it on you? Depends on who's putting it on, how are you putting it on? Like if you put this on with a beauty blender, it's gonna look very um, thick. It can look very thick, yeah. Okay. So to match Susan's more tan body, this might look a little bit darker going on initially. And I like to apply this foundation with more of a, a fluffy brush because it'll give it a slightly more natural finish than it typically would if you applied it with like a beauty blender or beauty sponge or like a flat brush. So it's gonna help to diffuse it and give it a little bit more of a natural finish, I guess. Okay, so foundation is on. So now we're gonna contour. I'm gonna use the Milk Baked Matte Bronzer Stick. This is Susan's, but I'm gonna first apply a ton of it on the top of my hand and warm it up so it's easier to blend once I actually apply it to her skin. So I'm gonna dip into that product, and this is just for like a couple of the, the layers. It just kind of gives me a nice, easy base to work with. I'm gonna start at the forehead, at the very top of her forehead where her hairline is, and start to press it, press it down. I feel like Ariana's look was not overly bronzed, but she definitely had like some bronzer on her forehead. But the rest of her face, from what I again, from what I can see, is it's like a chiseled cheek, but it's not like overly like warmed up and bronzed. So I'm not gonna do too much, which is hard for me because I love a good bronzed forehead. <laughs> <laughs> like I love same. I love that look. I just it's I think it's just so pretty. We're gonna start our contour. And again, I'm just gonna stamp this in to your skin and keeping it really high up too. Like I'm not gonna bring it down too low. And if I do end up bringing it down too low, I'm gonna show you a great way to, to clean that up and to really bring out that cheek contour. But for now, I'm gonna keep it really high because again, we're like, we wanna have that like Ariana like sculpted look up. I am gonna take a little bit more and sculpt underneath your jawline. Okay, now we're gonna go right into concealer, but actually before we conceal, I'm gonna do some pre-concealing brightening. We're gonna do a combination. I'm gonna color correct just a tad with, we use this all the time, it's the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer in Honey. It's a pinky shade, but what it's going to do is neutralize her under eye. So that little itty bit of darkness that Susan has, this is just going to cancel it out and correct it. And now we're gonna go with the YSL Touche Eclat? Touche Eclat? Touche Eclat? I don't know. This is in the shade 2.5. So we're gonna use this now to get that Ariana lifted, highlighted effect. Now this area right here, we're gonna cut it straight up. It's actually gonna do three things. It's gonna brighten, it's going to lift, and it's also going to clean up any of that shadow that I might've gone too low with and give us that like sculpted, chiseled Ariana eye effect. And then before I go in and blend out that sharp edge, do you see that sharp line? I'm gonna let it dry down so I have more control of it. 
And in the meantime, I'm gonna just bring this down and pat it into her skin, right by her temple, even like a little bit into her hairline. Taking a little bit more, I'm gonna start to really brighten up her tear duct area. This is, of course, Susan's product, which is why I'm using the actual applicator. If you're a makeup artist, don't do this. <laughs> you probably already know that. I don't need to tell you that. And I'm gonna take more of that. I'm gonna highlight between her brows. And I'm gonna bring it pretty far up, like further up than I typically would just to get that Ariana inspired look. Okay, so our highlight is done. Now I'm gonna go in with my actual concealer that we will be using to just conceal the under eye and also to highlight a little bit more. So we'll be using the Armani Luminous Silk Concealer. And this is Susan, so I'm just gonna pop that under her eye. So looking straight ahead on the camera just gives your cheeks like that really sculpted look. I am gonna blend this part right away. Whereas like these other areas like under your eye, I'm gonna let it dry down just a little bit, mm. which is totally fine. And I'm gonna switch to a really small beauty blender. I'm gonna start to pat that concealer in under your eye. So her under eye is lightly blended in. I'm gonna let it dry down even more. Before I go in and set it, I'm gonna do your cream blush. So I'm gonna do two blushes. I'm gonna start with a cream and I'm gonna finish it and set this with a powder blush. So I'll be using the Nude Sticks Nudies Cream Blush in the color Naughty and Spice. I love this color. We're gonna start pretty high up. So I'm gonna start to stamp this onto the top of Susan's cheekbone and bringing it right up there towards her temple laying it right underneath that highlight that we first placed and it's going right on top of that cream contour as well. So we're kind of like blending both those worlds together. So now we're gonna go and set your under eye concealer and I'm gonna use a shade and a powder that's more on the pink side and I really wanna brighten that under eye even more. So I'll be using the Prisme Libre powder in Rosé. It's the number three powder. They have like six of these or seven of these powders. Um, it's from Givenchy. I love this powder so much. So I've worked that completely into my powder puff, but before I actually hit her under eye with it, I'm gonna make sure that no creasing has happened in that small period of time. Inevitably, we're, we're gonna have some creases because it's not, it's still wet. So I'm gonna take that beauty blender and just press her under eye one more time. And I'm bringing this all the way up towards your temple because we highlighted that area. So I wanna make sure that I am setting it properly and enforcing that highlight, right? And getting like that Ariana highlighted look. And whatever's left over my powder puff, which is not much, I'm going to press this between her brows on the top of her chin, a little bit on the side of your mouth. And then I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna switch back to that original powder that we used to set your eyeshadow base, the one size powder. I'm switching to this powder because this is a neutral powder. It's not like that pink tone because I don't want her whole face to have like a rosy pink undertone to it. So this one's nice and neutral. And I'm gonna use this to bake and to cut her cream contour. I'm gonna line it up with her lip and just go straight up. So now this is baked just a little bit, not for like a really long time. I'm going to dust it off with a fluffy brush. And this also has a little bit of that same loose powder in it. It's just gonna help to blend it off easier. I also had a little bit on the sides of her nose. We're just gonna lightly dust that off. And now we're gonna go in with bronzer. And we're gonna go old school and we're gonna use Hula from Benefit. I say it's old school. I mean, it's still like I mean, a great bronzer. Yeah, it's a great bronzer. But it is old school. But the reason why I'm using this is because it's slightly more on the cool side. Like slightly. It's actually more neutral. So it's not going to add too much warmth to her skin. It's just going to help to, again, set that cream contour that we applied first. Enhance it and like lock it down. Just all across, leaving this highlight area nice and highlighted still. Now work this high up and then just bring it along the jawline to set it. And then switching to a small blending eyeshadow brush and more of the Hoola. 
I'm just going to lightly, lightly contour the side of your nose. Okay, so now that your under eye is set and concealed and powdered and all those things, we're gonna finish your eyes officially. Okay, my eyes are not finished. Okay. They're not officially finished. So it's like, you know, you kind of like, you take a step back and you go back and forth. But I'm just going back to that Alter Ego shade that's on the top, like that nice taupey neutral and a clean pencil brush. But now I am gonna take a little bit of mascara for her bottom lashes, not too overdo it with mascara by using the wand, I'm gonna take a fan brush. So now we're gonna go and highlight, and we're gonna go back to that same highlighter shade that we used earlier on your eyelid. Thank you, next. I'm getting better at it. <laughs> I'm gonna have it down. When I have the makeup on, I'm gonna be like transformed. So now we're gonna go in with a powder blush. This one's from Charlotte Tilbury. This is the color Pillow Talk. It's their cheek to chic. And if this doesn't scream bridal to you, I don't know what will. Like to me, like this is like- The most bridal? This is so bridal, it's not even funny. Moving on to lips. My favorite part. I know, my favorite part too. <laughs> so we're gonna cocktail a couple different things. We're gonna start with the Charlotte Tilbury Iconic Nude Lip Liner. It's just a really cool tone, great neutral nude lip liner. Now we're gonna cocktail it with the Makeup Forever Artist Pencil. This is in the color Wherever Walnut. Walnut. Kind of shade over that first lip liner. Okay, lip liner is done. Now we're gonna move on to the liquid lipstick and I'm so sorry ahead of time to everyone who is seeing these products. I'm gonna use two liquid lipsticks. I'm, again, I'm sorry. And if you find something that looks close to her lip color without having to mix the two, and I'm sure obviously there's, the color is out there, it exists. I just don't know what the product is. I don't is. know what it is, and yeah. these two shades are so pretty, either on their own or mixed together like I'm going to do. They're the NARS Liquid Lipsticks. This is Le Freak and Bad Guy. So one's lighter, one's darker. I'm just gonna cocktail them. So apparently they said that she used Armani products. Yeah. But in reality, you know, when celebrities don't share what beauty products they were using, it's because mm -hmm. they weren't paid. So mm -hmm. if they're not paid, surprise, surprise, they're not gonna share yeah. it. I get it. Like, why would they give yeah. that kind of a shout out? Yeah, well, the world Just wants to know. know. The world wants to know, but if we the world know. wants to know, then they should be paid for it is like yeah. the mindset. You know what it tells me? It mm -hmm. tells me that they used a bunch of different brands mm -hmm. and she really used like her usual, like her makeup artist really went in and used the product she wanted to use. <laughs> That's totally what I believe, mm -hmm. yeah. Because why wouldn't you, especially if you're doing some like such an important client's makeup, like someone you've been with for so long, you're not gonna use new things and you're not gonna test the waters with new products or even just using one brand specifically because let's be real. Nobody does that. Nobody, you're not gonna, it's really rare to find one brand that you're gonna love every single product of and want to use for something so important as like a bridal look. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, it's usually like a mix. And you know, another benefit of using a liquid lipstick like this one from NARS on your wedding day is it's gonna have that longevity. You can kiss, you can toast, you can eat, you can do all the things and not really worry about it transferring or you know getting smudged or feathering. So now I'm going in with that lighter one just in the center and working its way out to blend. And these are such pretty colors, I just, they're so like romantic and they're so timeless. Finishing step. Yeah. Are you ready? I'm so ready. Okay. I'm sitting here. My too. boy is tired. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're gonna set her entire face with the Hourglass Soft Focus Setting Spray. This is the Veil Setting Spray. I, this you bottle, introduced me to yeah, this. this it la and it lasts forever. Unless it does. Unless you're just like going to town with it, but. I go to town with it and mine still lasts actually a long time. Yeah. So this one is just the best because the mister, like the mist is so fine. It yeah. doesn't like attack your face, doesn't drench you. It's just, it's, it's perfect. Pretty. Mm -hmm. Yeah.
Your hair's not very Ariana. No, but... it should be really like slicked back, but then that would ruin the whole rest of the day and we have videos to shoot. We do. Actually, her hair does contribute to her look a little bit because she definitely like mm -hmm. pulls it taut. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. that pony. Yeah. Whew. She did it like a half up, but she did the half up to pull it taut. Yeah. So, so it's her look. So what do we think? Is she Ariana? I'm so looking at your ex. <laughs> Thank you. Next. I can't. You're gonna be in character the rest of the day. <laughs> okay, of course I will be. Go. Oh, ooh. It's like. It's, it's very matched. sculpted. Yeah, yeah. Scul very sculpted. That's sculpted. The word. So yeah. this is the look. I mean, and I'm just gonna say one one more time. This is inspired by. We took inspiration. We tried our best to mimic the colors and the shades that w that we thought we saw based mm -hmm. on those photos. Ariana I think, Grande I think it's inspired. Very pretty. I'm ready to step out for my performance or my wedding. I guess. Yeah. Even if you're not going for like the Ariana Grande look, this I still think this is a beautiful look for bridal. It's classic. Mm -hmm. It's clean. It's not over the top. Yep. It's it's very like sculpted too. Yep. If you guys have any questions, you can definitely ask us in the comments below. Nikki has her own YouTube channel where she is starting to post more regularly, I have noticed. Ooh. Ooh. So it's a lot of work. Her, yeah, find her on YouTube. She is also a working <laughs> makeup artist. So obviously yeah. being a content creator isn't her number one job, yes, but, but but we have encouraged her to continue posting. So well, she's I have doing... someone to keep me on track yeah. at home. So Yeah, that's true, that's true. Her husband as he well. Runs Ship. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. I love it. So anyway, follow Nikki on YouTube and on Instagram. Yep. She's makeup by Nikki LaRose. You can find me. I'm at Susan Yara. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you. Next. <laughs>